it was a good idea when the leader in 2004 came up with this concept about uh, uh, improving the business environment in, in which businesses operate in Ghana. There hasn't been attention on a third aspect of, of business, which is the business environment. You know, these businesses, you can have a very laudable business idea. You can be a good entrepreneur, but if the environment is not good, it's not conducive enough, your efforts may come to nothing. The first phase of the Buzak Fund, which was supported by Danida, DFID, and USAID, ended in February 2010 after six years of operations. Uh, we had, a, I think, a very successful implementation of the, the phase one, and um, we, we did manage to do 362 grants uh, during phase one. And uh, that led into to the, the second phase, which was supported by Danida and also USAID, and EU also came on board in, in the second phase of our support to, to business advocacy. What we do normally is, first of all, we train the PSOs, the applicants who have been uh, selected for support, and help them in do some evidence-based research. We would like uh, the advocacy issue to be based on, on facts. During this phase, the Buzak Fund provided 362 grants to business groups and associations spread all over the 10 regions of Ghana to undertake advocacy activities aimed at improving the Ghanaian business environment. What informed the, the NIDA to, to go into business advocacy? I think uh, the NIDA has a, a history of supporting uh, the grassroots level in, in general and the NIDA is into very many uh, uh, private sector areas uh, around in, in our developing countries and I think if you look at it from a pan-African perspective that in the supporting business advocacy in many countries and we saw the opportunity to also support business advocacy in, uh, in Ghana. Business advocacy looks at issues dealing with business regulations and laws and in trying to tackle such issues one business entity cannot do that. It has to be a group and association because the support we are providing is towards public good, not private good. We have, uh, in the second phase of USAC Fund, last three, four years, we have about 365 applications which have been approved and many of them, of which many of them have been completed and are able to document successes. We, we do look and focus much, a lot on, as Buzak Fund, on the results and the likelihood of the effects that can, that can de be derived from the support provided. And this is also part of our support and evaluation of the applicant. Once a PSO, a private sector organization, comes to us with a demand for a grant, In 1969, the Ghana Institution of Engineers was officially recognized by the National Liberation Council Decree, NLCD 404 of 1969, to regulate the practice of engineering in the country. So the Ghana Institution of Engineers is a professional body, and it's a society of people who've come together with a common aim, engineers, but it's also make sure that the people who come and join the institution and call themselves engineers and practice as engineers are qualified to do so. Our basic duty, what we do is that we certify engineering practitioners. The institution regularly conducts uh, seminars and lectures and talks and things to keep their members up to date. Currently, uh, when we talk about members, we talk about members of good standing those who are abreast with deans and their levies, and that is close to 4,000. Female, we have a group for them, we call the Women in Engineering, wine group, and uh, as at last uh, AGM in Takradi in March, uh, we were numbering just about close to 300. In any profession, when you practice, whatever you do affects the society. And therefore, when any 
the body of people begin to recognize that the work that they do affects uh, society and needs to be regulated and controlled, you find that people come together. For several years, we have found out that within the country, that is within Ghana, the engineering profession or practice is unregulated. Everybody gets up and they think they understand engineering. They think they can do engineering. They open a workshop, they design, they do all sorts of things under the name of engineering. So what we've realized is that for the country to move forward, to advance, we need to regulate engineering just as it happens in other developed economies. One of the main challenges that we faced as an institution is we had the powers under the Professional Bodies Registration Decree um, to regulate engineering practice. But in actual fact, it could not, it did not have the ability to regulate the profession properly. Yes, we have the NRC Decree 143 that will uh, make sure that you don't practice engineering until you are registered with a professional body of its kind, like us. But then we saw that it was a bit limited in terms of education and you know, all that, that before you set up any institution to cater for engineers, you needed to go through certain procedures. That was also missing from the NRC Decree 143. So with the, the council of this institution thought it wise at that time to have engineering council act. That's a law governing holistically about the practice of engineering. This is an association that uh, has been trying to get uh, a law passed to regulate the practice of engineering in Ghana. They've been doing this for a number of years before they came into contact with the Busa Fund. But it was only after the Busa Fund intervention that they were really able to succeed in persuading the Parliament of Ghana to pass an act uh, which is now regulating engineering practice in Ghana. The Buzak Fund, in recognition of the importance of such legislation to the economic growth of the country, provided a business advocacy grant to the Ghana Institution of Engineers in 2006. The grant was to empower the Ghana Institution of Engineers to petition to the government to pass a new legislation and this was entitled, Call for the Passage of Engineering Council Bill. After five years of sustained evidence-based advocacy action, a 23-year-old Engineering Council Bill has been passed. The Engineering Council Act 819 will make sure fatal accidents caused by the lack of qualified professional engineers will be a thing of the past. You and I will bear out that this is, uh, there's been a lot of shoddy buildings in the system collapsing here and there endangering lives and property. Uh, the latest example being the Melcom building disaster. Now, having such an act in place ensures that very high standards of engineering will be adhered to, and that would, would obviously impact on the quality of structures that are erected in the system. And so Ghanaians can be sure that they can live and work in very safe structures. To bring up the law required a lot of chal uh, challenges. First of all, we needed to mobilize people. We needed to make sensitize quite a number of people, a cross-section of people from engineers to parliamentarians to the general society. And then we have to take that message right across the country and that requires resources. And it is in this area that BUSAC stepped in to help us. When we heard about BUSAC, we tried initially to make an application, but we didn't get to know early enough. And so we were rushed and we could not uh, put in our initial application, but we had the concept of what we wanted to do um, written up. Then it was, I think, a couple of years, or the following year, um, we had someone who came by to tell us about the fund. And this person was a consultant and said, did we have any action that needed um, funding? So at that stage, I pulled out the concept that had been written up already 
and he looked at it and thought, yes, this is, said, this is the kind of thing that he thinks uh, Busak would be willing to fund. We have uh, done internal but also external evaluations of applications. We focus on a number of criteria. We, once we select the ones, we submit them to the steering committee that looks through them, has its own appraisal and selects finance for final selection, and approval of final selection. And there are a lot of procedures that one has to go through, meaning the associations will have to justify why they need those funds. So when it comes to our level, like the steering committee, we review the whole uh, application process, look at where it is necessary, looking at the national interest and the private sector interest, and through that, where it is feasible, we grant uh, the money. Once it's granted uh, approval and once funding is received, the service provider's role is to help in the implementation of the action. First of all, to ensure that whatever we plan to undertake within uh, the, the project is executed according to what has been agreed on the PUSAC fund. And also to ensure that we guide the uh, private sector organizations to do the right thing and then also to direct them to, to achieve their intended success. We have a set, a pool of monitors and these monitors, they are working on keeping follow-ups and checking in the field that the activities are being held according to the budget which has been provided. So BUSAC fund in their own wisdom and the uh, development partners have asked that before you access that fund, you apply for 100% of the, pool, uh, the, the fund, the grant, they act, they'll give you 90% and you pay 10%. The 10% you pay shows your capacity, it shows your interest. As part of our action, we had to set up a technical committee. We had to draw up a program. The institution, as part of the advocacy process, conducted a survey to gather sufficient knowledge on the engineering practice in Ghana to be able to present a convincing case to government. The activities included designing the survey instrument, undertaking data collection, analyzing of data gathered, and preparation of the report on the finding. The report of the survey was then referred to the technical committee to be considered in their work. We took the message, the PowerPoint, the presentation material around the country, and at each place we invited engineering institutions, engineering companies, uh, members of parliament, district assembly, DCs, MCs, and all of them came in and we told them what we wanted to do in connection with the evolution of engineering practice in Ghana. It wasn't straightforward because having done the whole countrywide sensitization, one of the major areas is how to move parliament and parliament moves under its own steam. They have got their own priorities and getting the bill through wasn't high on the agenda. But in the long run, we also had to hold special workshops for members of parliament from the select committees to come in for us to do a presentation to them, for them also to realize and understand how the country would benefit from passing of the law. When the bill finally did go to Parliament, it had, I understand, unanimous approval, and there were no problems with it, because everybody had seen the bill, had understood the bill, and um, we didn't have problems at all with the passage of the bill. The law is a very, very wide law, because it's been realized that there is no point in concentrating only on the engineers. They need the technicians, they need the artisans, so all of them will have to be properly trained and experienced for us to deliver reasonable and professional services. It has come to enhance the practice of engineering. This law we are talking about, Engineering Council Act 2011. This will help eliminate part uh, practitioners in, within the industry and help resolve all the uh, uh, structure and then the uh, issues we are facing in our construction industry in, in the country. Had it not been for the BUSAG fund, it is very unlikely that uh, we would have had the bill passed at the time that it was passed. 
maybe you would still be struggling by now to get it passed. Before WUSAC, we've been working on this for over a, a decade, all right? But WUSAC coming in helped it by providing us with the support to do quite a lot within a limited time. And like most of these things, if you stretch it over a long period, it loses momentum. Yeah, definitely, without WUSAC, I don't know what I'll be saying about, uh, on this interview by now, to be zero information. So BUSAC really helped, yes. Thanks to the BUSAC Fund and the use of evidence-based advocacy, the Ghana Institution of Engineers can now execute their roles in the Ghanaian construction sector. The BUSAC Fund is committed to the creation of more enabling business environment for development and growth of the Ghanaian private sector.